Hello and welcome to the real life practice module. Congrats, you made it to the end and are about to see how all of it can be applied in your classroom. The idea behind this module is to describe real student types who you've probably worked with and explain how to help them reach their aim using the knowledge you've gained from the course. Then, after the video, you're going to try doing this yourself. So, let's get started. Our first student is quite hardworking, always does her homework and is active in class. She does, however, have accuracy issues, both in speaking and writing, and her writing rarely answers the question asked exactly. Low task response. She has a substantial vocabulary and keeps expanding it. Her listening and reading skills are in great shape. What can we do to help her? Pause the video and think about it in terms of activities. Please write them down. Well, we can ask her to start a mistake journal and take down any mistakes that come up in writing from our error correction chart for her to decipher on her own. Then, based on that mistake journal, we can ask her to create a self-study plan on the topics she struggles with. The teacher can provide her with references, exercises, or even books. And finally, we can ask her to pay special attention to class brainstorming sessions when we talk about what to write in an essay. This, along with more detailed comments on her writing, will help her work on her task response. All right, let's move on to student number two. This student is very hardworking and active. He has quite a high opinion of himself and thinks he's headed for a great score. However, there are serious coherence issues in his speaking, which are only made worse by his bad control of grammar. This has to do both with accuracy and range. What can you do to help him? Please write your ideas down. Okay, first of all, the use of correction charts in writing and asking him to work out the mistakes on his own is a solid start. Then, since there is a disparity between what he thinks of his skills and what they are in reality, we need to think of something that will help him see the reality but won't crush him. We can ask him to record his speaking and to transcribe it. Next, he could either look for the mistakes on his own or bring it to the teacher to have a quick look over and use the symbols from the correction chart. In this case, correcting him on the spot while he's speaking might just ruin his confidence, and he's going to need that for the exam. So, there is a fine line between showing him what the reality is and crushing his spirit. To ensure his range is expanding as well, ask him to think of alternatives for his mistakes. How else can he say it? Our third and final student, and it is a tough one. Not only is she a weaker student, but she is also not motivated at all. She says her parents are making her prepare for the exam and she doesn't even want to take it and doesn't see the need. In terms of skills, she is pretty fluent and coherent. Her writing is decent, but she has trouble coming up with ideas. There are difficulties both with reading and listening, so overall things are not looking well. What can you do to help? Once again, write your ideas down. In this case, it would be futile explaining to her why taking the exam is a good idea. If her parents can do it, chances are she's opposed to the whole thing. What you can do is try to motivate her to do well, even in something she doesn't see the point of. Explain to her that it could be a contest with herself to see how well she can do. She's taking it anyway, why not try to do well? Of course, this might not work, but looking for things that can turn the situation around for her is a fair try. Moving on to working on her skills. It would be a good idea to assign a study body who is stronger in terms of skills. Then you can ask them to get together at least once a week and practice speaking or do listening or reading together. They can also brainstorm ideas for homework writing together. You could try encouraging her to read or watch films in English about things she likes. This will increase her overall level of skills in a relaxed manner. With this type of student, an unmotivated weaker one, praise is really important. Don't be stingy and praise her every time she does a good job, and she's bound to try harder every time. Well, looking at each case individually is not an easy task, but we don't usually work in conditions that let us teach only one student. So let's think about the three students from before as if they were a group. You know all their strengths and weaknesses, but how can you plan the lessons to try and accommodate for all three? And in reality, you have a lot more, while at the same time trying to cover the amount of material you have to. 
Of course, any exam class is a fast and ruthless train, and we've already talked about how evident the skills gap becomes in this case, and how weaker students lose their motivation because of that. But we can adjust our plan a little to make a difference in how our students progress. Pause the video and write your ideas down. In our case, we can pair student 1 and student 3 to become study buddies to help student 3 with her skills, because we know that student 1 is hardworking. Since all of them have issues with either task response or coming up with ideas, we can make sure to include the brainstorming stage in our lessons. Likewise, because all of them have issues with accuracy and or range, we can include a sort of grammar corner in our class where we talk about structures they have issues with. We can make it more student-centered and use the learner autonomy. Here's how we can do it. Ask them to bring a mistake or a grammar topic they struggle with. Then have the rest of the class share what they think or know about it. Let them use their phones to research if there are doubts. You can finish it off by systemizing it all on the board and giving them links to more practice exercises or, alternatively, including more practice in the next lesson. To sum up, there are many ways you can combine the ideas we have shown you. Sometimes, because of external constraints, like lack of time or the amount of material you have to include, you might not be able to deliver the lessons of your dreams. Remember, you are your most important resource, and if one day it is about surviving a lesson more than it is about making it your best, it's okay. But we, as teachers, always try to be better than yesterday, and there is no harm in saying, okay, today was about surviving, but I can always do better tomorrow. This is a powerful mantra and something that has helped me a lot in my years of teaching. There is one more task waiting for you after the video. We hope it will be helpful. And we hope you've learned some useful tricks in our course that will make you an even better teacher. Good luck!